Hi, it's Big Hera again with another installment of my video blog. I'm playing a little bit of catch up. It's been a while since I've done these, so I had a few topics backed up. Um, to this uh, installment, I was going to talk a little bit about something I keep mentioning in various um, episodes of the video blog under other topics, and that's the one of um, player investment or interest in, in the campaign. Um, this really applies to any system or any genre. It doesn't l limit itself to D&D or to fantasy gaming. Uh, it's really about the players at the table uh, and um, you know, the, the GM and uh, everybody having a good time, really. Um, when I say player investment, what I'm talking about is I'm talking about the players at the table are getting into the game. They're getting into the campaign. They're, they're, it's what brings them back week after week. It makes them think about what's going on in the uh, in the game between sessions and during the sessions. It's what makes them want to see what happens next. It what makes them want to um, play those characters and play that setting and um, play your game, you being the GM. Um, it's an important aspect of anything that's going to run more than you know a one shot or a single adventure because it is in a sense the momentum that's going to keep the game moving forward and once the players finish you know a, an adventure let's say you're running a module or just a dungeon crawl that you wrote yourself and they get through that and you know they get to such and such a level they get they you know save the princess or they get the gold or whatever it is um that's great and it's not that that isn't going to make them feel like they've accomplished something and you know hey they want to do some more but really that at that point what they're doing is they're waiting for you the GM to come back to them and say okay and now for tonight or for the next couple weeks or whatever it is we'll be playing this and you put the adventure in front of them and then they say okay I guess we're taking a ride on a pirate ship or whatever the adventure happens to be um, which isn't bad in and of itself but it means that the players are taking sort of a passive role in the events of the game and it means they're sort of depending on you the GM to supply the momentum um, that can put a, not only a burden on the GM to constantly be the impetus to keep things moving forward but it can also ultimately there's a risk that players can grow bored or frustrated like well you know he's been handing us these things to do for a while but I don't know if I want to keep doing that I don't I mean, his last adventure really wasn't my thing. Maybe we should play something else. And then your campaign goes, you know, down the drain because you don't have people going, "No, oh, it's oh man, I want to see what I want to do this. I want to get this done. I want to see what happens." Um, there are a couple different ways you can try and make this happen. One of the main things is, and this is best done before you even get started, but I mean, you can do it any time, and that is find out what they, the players, want. The players, not the characters. Do they want a game with a lot of combat? Do they want a game with a lot of social interaction or political intrigue or whatever? Do they want lots of puzzles? Do they want um, huge earth-shaking events, epic level stuff that's, you know, save the world kind of thing? Or are they more interested in that down and gritty, you know, clawing for every copper piece and going to, you know, work your way up from nothing and, and see see if you can, you have what it takes to, you know, become a big deal from starting from nowhere. And different players want different things, and it's very possible to have different players in the same group that aren't going to agree on that. So what you get there is a situation where you need to kind of balance things. Well, first of all, you need to make sure that, that what a given player wants is not going to be just a rotten fit for the game. I mean, if there's just no way for you to accommodate that, I want to be a uh, super ninja, and I want to be able to run around just killing people left and right, and I just want to hack stuff up and everything, and you have this whole idea about some 
court intrigue Game of Thrones type thing and um, it's just this horrible fit that's something that needs to be hashed out ahead of time you don't want to get two or three sessions into it and have one of your players just bored to tears because it's so not the game they want to play that said I think you can put things into almost any game where there's a balance where you can say well look there's going to be some combat there's going to be some hack and slash but it's not going to be a dungeon crawl or you can say just as likely to the person who's the high charisma high intelligence person saying well you know I think I'd rather have a game where I can use my wits and you know maybe talk my way out of things or something like that and you can say well there'll be a chance for that there'll be there'll be situations where it's better to talk than to fight but you know you are going into the underdark you know kind of a thing and you are going to be doing a certain amount of uh, exploration dungeon crawling kind of a of adventuring so there's going to be lots of monsters where there's just no way you're gonna have a chance to uh, you know, talk your way out of things but on the flip side you will run into people who you can parlay with or whatever and that's the balancing act I was just talking about before where different players may want different things and you can say listen you want to hack things to bits there's going to be lots of cases where there's just big scary monsters that you just need to stick with a sword and you want to talk to people you're gonna run into these intelligent folks um, who aren't necessarily interested in having a big battle but you need to be careful about what you say and you can be able to negotiate with them and do all these things and then you have to mix it all together and kind of come up with a blend that's going to give something to everybody um, and give each player's character a chance to sort of shine if one guy has really worked up his character concept and you know his scores or his skills or depending on whatever system you're doing support this where he's the, he's the face, he's the negotiator. You want to give him a chance to do that. Likewise, some guy's all rippling muscles and a great big sword, and he wants to just, you know, smack some monster to bits. You know, there needs to be some combat. And this gets to the next thing, which is what is a lot of people talk about all the time, which is called meaningful player decisions. Not character, player decisions. The, char the, the characters are going through the adventure. The players need to feel like when they make a decision, we go left instead of right, we go up instead of down, we'll talk instead of fight, whatever it is, um, that they have a chance to make meaningful decisions that are going to affect what happens next. They're not being railroaded, they're not being um, just swept along with events that they've got some control over their own destiny. If they feel like they're out of control, they feel like you're just telling them a story and they don't have an investment. They don't they, it's like, hey, you know what? Write it all down and I'll read it later and I'll see what happens. So you want the players to feel like they can make decisions both as players where they say, I think we should set up the whole tactics like this and have all that effort that they go into worth something even if it's not going to decide the outcome of some battle, it, at least they can feel like all that effort we did into making these decisions had some effect or at least made some difference. Or we decided not to chase down the bandits and instead we decided to escort the um, the, the people who had been robbed safely into town. And maybe your adventure was something where you were supposed to go to the bandit king's lair that is a very meaningful character decision. They made a, a player decision. They made a very conscious decision to one thing instead of the other. And I'm not saying that that means your adventure now must revolve around all the stuff that you set up for the Bandit King layer must happen in town. That wouldn't necessarily make sense. But they need to be free to make that decision. And this gets to the next part. Um, you, as a GM, need to be flexible to a certain degree to uh, adapt to those decisions. Um, there needs to be enough flexibility in the setting and there needs to be enough, enough flexibility in the plot and there needs to be, you as a GM need to be flexible enough mentally and have a certain amount of improv skill or you know have a certain amount of basic work prep so you have that flexibility to kind of go in different directions that the players can do that.
Now, that said, if there is some sort of plot point going on, and King is slowly amassing enough money that he's going to hire mercenaries and he's going to sack the castle and take over the, the barony or you know whatever it is, you don't have to jettison that whole plot line because they didn't choose to pursue it. You can totally have that still happening in the background, but you may want to, because it's a game and because you want people to continue to have fun, you may drop a hint here and there saying, you know, yeah, you know, it's um, seen a lot of these uh, mercenary types floating through town lately. Maybe they pursue that hook, maybe they don't. But you give them the chance to make that decision and you leave it kind of open-ended. This gets back to the idea of we've, that I talked about before of a sandbox where there can be things going on in it, but what the characters do and where the characters go and everything is left to the player's devices. You're not putting an adventure in front of them saying, tonight we are going into the temple of you know horrible doom. Um, you're kind of letting them pick their own path. Not everybody plays that way, and not everybody needs to, but I have found that that is the kind of thing that's going to be more likely to generate um, that sense of investment in, in the um, in the setting and in the campaign among the players because they're going to feel like what they choose to do is going to really matter. Which brings me to my last point, which is while they're making all these decisions and doing all these things, there needs to be a sense of progress. There needs to be a sense of purpose. And by progress, I don't necessarily mean more experience points and going up in level or getting rich or any of that. I mean, let's say um, I had I had a campaign once. I don't like to get into campaign stories where one of the characters thought the greatest thing to do. They discovered that these goblins brewed this um, basically moonshine, and um, they took a barrel back with them back to town with them because they didn't know what else to do with it, and. They had gone to a certain amount of effort about this, and the fellow who had, the, the character who had uh, suggested they do this, his player kept thinking about this, and he went to a certain amount of effort to try and find someone who might buy it. So I said, yeah, you know what, there's some crazy dwarf that happens to like this stuff. And he said, oh yeah, that's good stuff. And he got, you know, whatever, 50 or 100 gold pieces for this, you know, 20 gallons of moonshine. And as a result, the player thought, wouldn't it be great to go back to these goblins or go find some more goblins because I think they killed most of them uh, who make this stuff and set up a business and at the time I was thinking to myself this is insane this is this is nothing to do with the campaign arc this is nothing to do with what the characters are doing right now this is just totally out of left field but while I didn't just start dropping things in front of him so he could do that, I didn't shut the door on it. Um, what happened were the, was that the other players wanted to pursue more conventional things for a D&D type game. They wanted to go to other dungeons, they wanted to go to other adventures and kill other monsters, so he kind of went along with them. But my, it wasn't me, the GM, shutting him down. And again, that became an issue between the players and between the characters. It wasn't an argument, but I'm saying it was it was decisions made among themselves and they went they they abided by those decisions. Um but had he chosen to go that route, there would have been things along the way I could have put down like he encounters another goblin tribe and well, son of a gun, yeah, they're also distilling this moonshine stuff, uh, and he could have tried to set up business contacts and just it's just all that stuff, and it would have been an interesting role-playing experience. And he could have achieved a certain amount of progress towards that goal, even though that goal didn't have anything to do with killing monsters and taking their stuffs and going up in level. Um, it was a purpose. It was a, it was a player-created, character-driven goal and it gave that character a purpose. Um, and any time the what's driving your campaign forward, the, whatever, any time the events in your campaign are being driven forward by in-character goals set by the players, what you have there is a huge load taken off of the GM's 
shoulders where you, the GM, no longer have to think, oh, man, what am I going to what am I gonna do tonight? I don't know. I haven't got anything prepped. I mean, I guess I'll just, you know, do a random dungeon crawl, um, which you can do. But if the players are like, no, 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 man, we, we totally have got to get back in and find that... Um, find that dude who wants to buy the moonshine because if he can if we can get a contract with him for him to take it back to the door fold that's you know whatever then great they're they're jazzed about it they're they're pumped about it and they're providing that momentum to keep things rolling forward for you uh making your job just a little bit easier anyway those are my thoughts on that on player interest and investment in the campaign so take it easy that's all for now